one or two vectors equal? For a little Latin lesson, the word vector comes from the uh, comes from the Latin to carry. And that that kind of helps to, to lead to our answer here for for deciding what makes two vectors equal. Two vectors are equal if they have the same length or magnitude and direction. And that's it. So this vector here, PQ, moves you three to the right and up to. And in fact, let's give it a name. Let's just call it vector U. So vector U moves you three to the right and up to. What does vector OA do, which I guess we'll give a new name, let's call it V. Vector V moves you three to the right and up to. So I'm going to write the, in, in both cases here, I'm writing the component form. And so those vectors are equal. So notice these vectors uh, have the same length and direction. So let's talk about that for a second. How do I know they have the same length? Well, see how I describe them by writing them in the component form? Once you do that, you're guaranteed that they have the same. Uh, and the, the fact that the, the component forms are the same, you're guaranteed that they have the same length and direction. Uh, in Algebra 1, at one point, you probably learned about slopes of lines. And you learn that the slope of a line is sort of a measure of how steep the line is, right? It's like a measurement of how steep the line is in the same way that we use feet to, to measure how tall somebody is. Slope can tell you how steep a line is. But slope also indicates direction when you think about it, right? Um, and that's sort of the use we're going to need here uh, with re regards to vectors. Because as I move three right and up two, even though that's technically not the way we think, think of slope, we think of sl uh, slope as rise over run, um, that idea is sort of implicit in this notation here. So your direction comes right from your component form, which are the same here, and their lengths are the same because we, we of course, could do the Pythagorean, you know, make a right triangle and do the Pythagorean theorem, and you'd see that they have the same length. So the key thing to keep in mind is that vectors, when it comes to vectors, the position is somewhat irrelevant. In other words, where the vectors are on the screen is completely irrelevant. So this vector here I'm about to draw is equal to those other two, because I'm going to draw it, taking you three to the right and up two. So that vector I just drew, drew we'll call it, uh, we'll call it, you know, n is equal to all of these vectors. Okay, so u equals v equals n. They all have the same length and direction. It doesn't matter where they're located. But notice that u, OA or u, we could call it either one. Uh, it's easier to sort of read what its component form is because if you center your vector, so any of these vectors, if you move them to the origin, move the tail to the origin, if you just look at the coordinate of the head, that'll tell you its component form. So um, we say those are in standard position. In standard position just means just means that the uh, tail is at the origin. Okay, um, so I want to do an example now. It says here, let u be a vector represented by the directed line segment from r equals negative 4, 2 to s equals negative 1, 6. And we need to find looks like the absolute value, but that's notation for the magnitude. So again, remember, magnitude means length. Now be very careful with notation in these problems. See how R and S don't have the, the pointy brackets? That means they're points. All right, They're not vectors. The vector is described in terms of those points. So R is negative 4, 2. So we'll graph that negative 4, 2. And uh, S is negative 1, 6.
So let me draw my vector here. There's vector u. It takes me from r to s. So what are we expected to do here? We are expected to find the magnitude. Find the magnitude. So absolute value means magnitude. The absolute value bars. Well, magnitude is just its length. So we have a few options here. One is to just make ourselves a nice right triangle here and use the Pythagorean theorem, viewing the the vector is the hypotenuse. So now we see this base of the triangle has a side of 3, and that is a height of 4, and of course 3 squared plus 4 squared equals c squared, but to be, let's be technically correct, absolute value of u squared, meaning that length. Uh, and that's 9 plus 16 equals absolute value of u squared. And if we square roots, we see that the magnitude is 5. Okay, that's one way to do it. If you're not looking at a picture, you're just given the points and you don't have graph paper or the points are just way out there, um, you can use what's, you know, the, the should be familiar to you, the distance formula. And maybe here's where you'll notice the connection between the distance formula and the Pythagorean theorem. Um, the distance formula would say take your x-coordinates, negative 1, subtract negative 4, square that, plus 6 minus 2, the difference in your y-coordinates, square that. And here, when you work it all out, you get the square root of negative uh, 1 minus negative 4 is... Uh, 3, right, 3 squared plus 4 squared, which we know is 5. So notice the negative 1 minus the negative 4, is, all that did is tell you this distance here, right? That's negative 1, that's negative 4. When you subtract, you get 3. And the y is up here, 6 minus 2. y coordinate is 6 minus the y coordinate of 2 gives you a 4. So hopefully that gives you a little connection between the distance formula and the Pythagorean theorem. The distance form is nothing more than a shortcut to the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so there's its magnitude, two ways of finding its magnitude. Part B says find the component form of the vector. Now this is generally really easy if you have a graph in front of you, right? Start at the tail. To get to the head, you move three right and up four. So vector u in component form, we can write as 3, 4. If you're not looking at a graph, you can use the point information to get that answer. So the vector is described as taking you from R and moving you to S. So what you can do is take point S and subtract point R. So S is negative 1, 6. R is negative 4, 2. Again, S is where the, the arrowhead is, right? And if you subtract these points in this way, it's another way of getting component form. Negative 1 minus negative 4 is negative 1 plus 4, which is 3. And 6 minus 2 is 4. If you are to do this, if you're someone who likes this, be careful, make sure you subtract the tail from the head. Because if not, you're going to get negative 3, negative 4, which is the, ve the vector in the complete opposite direction. And vectors uh, specify direction as part of their, their definition, so you want to make sure you do that right. Okay, but if you have a picture, it's, it's uh, remarkably easy.